Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right there is Nikki Kinzer. Am I? Am I here? Or am I late? I don't even know. Maybe. Maybe I decided not to show up. Maybe you just decided to, maybe every word, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take your track on this audio file and I'm going to make it a little bit late. So when I stop speaking, there'll be a three or four second pause oh, between when you start. That would really annoy people. That will give everybody an aphasia. That's <laughs> yeah. great. Uh, we are talking about procrastination today. Are you ready for this? Did you prepare? I did. See, that's because you don't procrastinate. And that is something oh. I know about you. No, I do. Yeah. Oh, well, I your do. public face is quite good. <laughs> Thank you. Your well, reputation, you've snowed everybody. I, I appreciate that because, yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. procrastinated uh, uh, on a lot of things. Clearly, those around you procrastinate far worse because it makes you look like you're fantastic. Uh, yeah, thank you, but I don't go that yeah. far. No. Well, it's... then I can't wait to hear your perspective on it. As someone who has been known to procrastinate himself, uh, I'm delighted to have this conversation. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and dig in. Before we do that, you should head over to takecontroladhd.com. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the show uh, via email. Join the mailing list and we'll send you a, new, uh, a note every time a new episode is released. You can connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD and uh, get your thoughts uh, on this very show. And if you haven't checked it out, we sure would appreciate you uh, connecting with us on Patreon. If you become a supporter for just a, a couple of bucks a month uh, at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast, you can join us for a live stream every week. You can, you're, you're welcomed into the private Facebook group, the ADHD group. That sounds because great. We're awesome with names. I know. Taking control, the ADHD group. Yes, so creative. Supporting the ADHD podcast <laughs> and uh, and and uh, join us in there. We have a, a growing group in there that is just fantastic. We mm-hmm. some just the contributions are fantastic and growing uh, every day. So uh, we sure hope you you will check us out at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. If you've ever been impacted or learned anything from this show, uh, this is a great way to quite literally give back. You don't have to. You really don't have to, uh, but uh, but it, we appreciate it. So Absolutely. thank you very much. All right. And maybe you've been procrastinating. <gasps> what? What? <laughs> what? Maybe that could be. Hello, product tie-in. I know, right? Good job. So where? First of all, where did this come up? How did this come up? Uh, have you been waiting to talk about this for a long time? Well, no, actually, you know, this is the flow of things, right? So when I was doing the outline for our show last week. Mm-hmm. There's a little piece of that conversation that really led into, oh boy, we could really talk about procrastination here and how to get started. But then I thought, that's a whole nother show, right? I don't mm-hmm. want to like put all information in one show because that's no fun. And we right. don't like to do really long shows. So it made sense to kind of push this to the next, to the next show. And that's, that's where this inspiration came from, really. So. I, uh, yeah. Okay. So I texted you and I said, "Hey, show num- you know follow up show after this show is going to be about procrastination." And we, yeah, we're, we're finally getting around to it. Yeah. Let's just say it. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, so, what is it that is? Uh, what's at the root of procrastination when you're working with folks? What do you see? Avoidance. They're hiding. They're hiding from it. Yeah. So for yeah. for whatever reason, and I would say, um, tis the season too, right? It's tax season. You got to be hiding from that. Oh yeah. I'm a, I'm a tax hider. I am oh. too. And yeah. yeah, for sure. So I think that it's avoidance um, of 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 a project or a task of probably something you just don't want to do. So maybe it's boring. Um, you don't have any interest in it, like taxes, who wants to put their paper together and, you know, mm-hmm. who wants to do that, but it has to be done. Uh, it also could be things that are just too overwhelming. So, um, you're not sure where to start. And when we talked about this last week where you were saying, I'm a huge advocate of, you know, breaking those projects down to small, small, small pieces. And when we're not doing that, then we're really unclear of where to start. So it's like walking into a really cluttered room and you're in the middle of it and and you just don't know what to do. And that could, you know, that could be anything that could be a, uh, organizing, but it could be a project that you have or taxes that you have to do or whatever. And then I think it's limiting beliefs too. We got to, we have to shine a light on that, you know, that, that something is hard. It's too complicated. It has too many steps. Um, I've already tried this before. What's the, you know, what's the point? Um, all of those things get in our way too. So I think there's, uh, there's different reasons and I'm sure there's more, you know, to, to add to that list, but that's probably one of the more common 
you know, list that I see. Yeah, especially first time, right? If there's some, if it's a big project you're asked to take on and you haven't done it before, it's so easy when you run into that first little challenge, the first little thing that you can't quite wrap your head around to throw in the towel and crawl under your desk figuratively, maybe literally. And it doesn't even have to be big projects. I was working with a client yeah. the other day and, and uh, she needed to activate her credit card. And, um, you know, they kept asking her to, to to give her new passwords. Like she had to keep redoing her password. And it's like, that's so annoying. It's annoying. And, yeah. uh, you know, if I hadn't been on the phone with her, she would have probably, well, we know because we talked about it. She wouldn't have followed through with it. She would have just said, I'm going to do this later. Um, but fortunately I wasn't going to let her off the phone until, <laughs> until she did it. And so she, she got through the process, but it's yeah. those little roadblocks that can really stop a person and just say, screw it. I'm going to do it later. I don't need to do this now because some of these things that we're procrastinating on, you know, could be done later, but you keep pushing them and pushing them. And it's just so, it's so, I think, bad for your mental health because it's those tolerations that we've talked about before. Yeah. They just nag at you, you know, and. How does this apply to motivation? And I ask that because, uh, you know, it seems like there, there's a reason you have to activate your credit card. There's a reason you're asked to take on a new task. But uh, at, at some point, those those reasons, uh, do you just fall out of love with the motivation to make the call to change your password? Do you just think, uh, it's, I'm just not motivated enough? Yeah, I think that that's a really key question because we do have to tie your motivation into action, right? Because part of mm -hmm. part of what you're avoiding, we know that there's a reason you're avoiding it, but the next step is to take action. And so now we have to connect that action to your motivation. So what's driving you to do the task? What's the reason for it? Well, for your debit card, obviously it's important because that's how you're going to spend money. That's how you're going to go to the grocery store and buy your groceries. I mean, this is a real necessity for you. Um, and that's what makes it important, right? Is that it's, it's going to make your life easier than having to go and Gosh, write a check. I mean, because if you don't even have your debit card, you can't go to the ATM. I mean, like, yeah, right. you know, or you're going to have to use a credit card. I mean, to, to yeah. buy groceries. I mean, there's just so many roadblocks that could get in your way. So we want to know what's driving you, what, what makes it important. But there's another question that I really want people to think about. And I think this is, this is really important is what would it mean to you if you finished this task? And that's different than asking what it makes it, what makes it important. I mean, we really want to know what it means to you. So gosh, your life is going to be easier. You're going to have one less thing to think about. You're going to be less stressed. You're going to be less frustrated because now you've got that debit card on hand. Um, you're going to, you're sort of painting a picture of a future world in which this is done. Yeah. Like what would it look like if you could look back on, on a time before? Once you now know that you are comfortably finished right. with whatever this job is. Yeah. So now we're connecting that emotion to what this really means. It's not just about why it's important, but what this means for you. And um, that's a really key question. And that can be for getting a debit card, but it can also be for, you know, organizing your garage or um, getting the taxes done. I mean, for for hopefully, you know. I hope for this, that the taxes are going to mean I get money back. Uh, and not that I owe money, but I don't know. I mean, but, you know, imagine if, if you can get your taxes done and that does mean you're getting a refund. That's a big deal, you know? And, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. that's what I want you to do is connect that motivation of what makes it important. And, and hopefully, you know, that might drive you a little bit. But we also have to look more at just not internal motivation, but also external um, motivation. And um, the reason for that is a lot of times the internal motivation is not enough for someone with ADHD because it could really mean a lot to you. It could be really important, but for whatever reason, you just don't want to do it. And so that external motivation becomes really important. So that's when those deadlines become important. That's when having uh, maybe an accountability partner would be really helpful or somebody that you're talking to, to help, you know, help you get to that goal or whatever, um, that external motivation, it may be key for you to, to get started on this. Uh, you, you're sitting down with somebody who's been procrastinating, who's struggling with ADHD, who is, is trying to figure out how to, uh, how to move forward and how to change behavior. How do you start? How do you help them start the day? What is the eight o'clock Monday morning? What does that look like? We got to get your energy up. 
Okay. So you got, you are going to be attracted to things that, you know, make your brain excited, right? We know that about ADHD. You are mm-hmm. going to want to do things that excite you, that you look forward to. So, you know, first thing before you know, you're going to have to start a task that you have been procrastinating on is do something fun first. Do something that gets mm-hmm. you energized. Go take a walk, do some exercise, listen to your favorite music, do some yoga, do whatever you need to do. Pet your dog, um, watch a funny video. Like, you know, I love puppy videos on YouTube. You know, they make you smile. So do that. Um, and then set a timer to go do your task. You know, we want to go into that task as ti- as Tigger, right? And not Eeyore. Because yeah. if you're Eeyore, it, oh man, something that you already hated to do is going to be that much worse, which is going to give you that much more percentage to decide I'm doing something else. Like I, you know, you're not going to succeed. You go in as Tigger. If you're Eeyore, yeah. And then you, then you step in. Yeah. Proof. And then, uh-huh. exactly. And then if, if you go <laughs> into Tigger, nice joke. I get it. But if you, uh, that was good. I just was <laughs> waiting for that to come back around. <laughs> but if you go in as Tigger, man, you can conquer the world. Yeah. I got this. You know, I can do five minutes of, of filing or I can do five minutes of sorting my stuff or whatever it may be. Like, you know, you're just in a better place. You, you bringing up Tigger is that's close to my heart yeah. because Tigger is like, is like uh, an aspirational figure for exactly. me. Exactly. You, you think of the song, right. right? Tops are made out of rubber. Bottoms are made out of spring. That means you are flexible and adaptable. You can jump from thing to thing as you're required, but you're made out of rubber, which means you are resilient. Resilient. And I, for some reason, that is like, uh, that holds in my brain so well, that metaphor. I need to be flexible and resilient to the world yes. around me, just like just Tigger. Just like Tigger. I love that. Fun, 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 yes. fun, fun. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So mm-hmm. I want to bring Tigger in to his room that he has to deal yeah. with. <laughs> With all of his high energy, just do something to get started. And that is where we were talking about, you know, breaking your projects down as little as you possibly can. And if you don't know how to do that, you need to get somebody to help you. You don't have to do it by yourself because that is a very difficult thing to do um, for somebody who has mm-hmm. ADHD. It's very difficult to, what is that expression, you know, look at the look at the individual trees when you're seeing the whole forest, you know, see the, see the forest for the trees or whatever it is. Yeah. Those trees, it's trees, trees, and tiggers in the middle yeah. somewhere. It's a lump. It's yeah. a lumber metaphor. Yeah. And tiggers yeah. in there waiting for you. So tiggers in there <laughs> bouncing, bouncing from tree from to tree. tree. Yeah. So we want to look at what is the smallest thing that you can do to get started? What is the smallest point of entry? Uh, maybe that's five minutes a day of doing something. Maybe it's working on one paper, one email, whatever it's going to help you do to, to build that momentum, build, your self-confidence, break through those limiting beliefs that you can do this, um, that you are making a difference and, uh, you know, keep the project in front of you too. This is really important, especially on those projects that are like home projects that really do not have deadlines. I mean, like, you know, my garage can stay a mess forever. I mean, yeah, it really... We've been talking about your garage, years. I think, since we started this and podcast. it still makes me mad. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, going back to your original, uh, oh, you don't procrastinate? Yeah, whatever. (laughs) You're right. Maybe maybe I I have evidence to the contrary. But I'll tell you, though, (laughs) when I do procrastinate, one of the things I do is I do figure out, like, I try to identify what is bothering me about this and what is the minimal that I can do. And sometimes it is. It's like I have to re, I have to listen to myself. And say, what would I tell somebody else? Well, I would say, just do five minutes. Just do something. And that's what I have to do, too. Um, And then what I was going to say is uh, keep the project in front of you. Because it's easy to forget Mm -hmm. um, that the closet is bugging you until every time you open the closet. So if it's something that's a priority, if it's something that's really going to mean something to you to get it done, then do keep it in front of you. Work on it on a daily basis if you can, or at least make an appointment on a weekly basis just so that you're not not paying attention to it. Um, and I'm going to go back to the accountability partner. That's going to be my last point. 
to when you're procrastinating. Um, body double is what we talked about last week, but I think it's still really important for these things too, that, you know, there's magic here when you've got somebody that you're talking to about this project, you have somebody that's keeping you accountable, um, for your goals and, and your progress. Um, and, and, and really, you know, it, it, it can get you to a point that you just can't do by yourself and, and, there's no shame in that. I mean, I think that when you look at the success and you're seeing that you're able to, to meet these small goals, that's great to be able to celebrate that with someone. I, uh, I, I think this is oh, every one of these things that we've talked about are, are things that I struggle with and have struggled with over time. And um, I, I think, you know, being able to break projects down and being able to use, I think my biggest secret, I think, to being able to figure out how to break projects down is using repeating tasks mm-hmm. effectively. Um, you know, I have, I'm right in the middle of a thing where I have to create 200 uh, original graphics for a uh, for a podcast and I have to I, I like sitting down and thinking of gosh I need it's going to take me 12 straight hours to do this if I do it in, in but if I break it down into a repeating task that hits my hits my to do list at 11 o'clock every morning it says do five yeah. of these do 10 of these uh, and as soon as I'm done I check it off then I'm done for the day and then I move on to the next batch tomorrow and I don't have to think about it right to I so so I guess what I'm getting at the biggest benefit uh, or or the biggest reward of doing something small and checking it off is that you free yourself you you get to live for just a bit liberated from the stress of the whole yeah right and that's that's huge that is a huge reward and and so um, this is this is great stuff I really uh, I appreciate it. I hope you all have gotten something out of this, something out of Nikki's wisdom, and uh, uh, let's just say Nikki's wisdom and my long suffering. Oh, uh, and your and, wisdom uh, and yeah. my suffering. <laughs> we're all in this, this together. This is uh, th- <laughs> we're all in it together. It's a big yeah. boat. Jump in uh, uh, again. Shame hates the sun. Say it loud and proud, and uh, and and we'll get through it together. Thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to this show. We appreciate your time and your attention. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast.